Uh, breaking news into CNN, former President Trump's chief of staff, Mark Meadows, no longer planning to meet with the select committee investigating the January 6th insurrection. Yeah, that didn't last long. CNN's Whitney Weil joins us now. Whitney, I mean, the timing here is interesting to me because he puts out this book, which Trump is clearly not happy with giving details of just how sick he was. Uh, I mean, are, are those events connected at all, or is this purely a legal development? You know, it's it's difficult to say, but what we know mm. is that for the last several days, we've seen more and more details coming out of this Mark Meadows book, some of uh, you know which he's discussed on the air, um, and it's information that the former president probably wouldn't like. Uh, but here in this letter, we've just obtained. This is breaking news. I'm going through it right now with you live. Uh, there's a key line here, or a few of them, actually. So Jim and Erica, uh, his attorney for Mark Meadows says, we agreed to provide thousands of pages of responsive documents, and Mr. Meadows was willing to appear voluntarily, not under compulsion of the select committee's subpoena to him for a deposition to answer questions about non-privileged matters. However, this letter also says uh, that now, basically, they're, they're changing their mind. Um, in short, we have now every indication from the information supplied to us last Friday, again, quoting from this letter, upon which Mr. Meadows could expect to be questioned that the select committee has no intention of respecting boundaries concerning executive privilege. Here's another key line. In addition, we learned over the weekend that the select committee had, without even the basic courtesy of notice to us, issued wide-ranging subpoenas for information from a third-party communications provider without regard to either the broad breadth of the information sought which would include intensely personal communications of no moment to any legitimate matters of interest to the select committee, nor to the potentially privileged status of the information demanded. So there's a couple themes here I think are important to explore. There are several people who have been subpoenaed who are basically saying, look, these communications I had with President, then President Trump fall under executive privilege. That is the key debate here, because Steve Bannon has tried to say that too, and it was something that the select committee did not accept, which is why he's now going through this criminal process, uh, being held in, attempted to be, uh, and at least being charged with criminal contempt of Congress. So now Mark Meadows still basically using this line that he, that these communications are covered by executive privilege, he yeah. was the chief of staff. There is there is much more legitimacy to that argument than for Steve Bannon, who we know is not an employee of the White mm -hmm. House at the time. So these are the key things that are going to continue to be debated. But now we're seeing this about face when last week our understanding was that Mr. Yeah. Meadows had planned to cooperate. So now, you know, this it, it throws the timeline up in the air. It, it mm -hmm. is a, a new hurdle for the House Select Committee. So we'll see if they accept this or if he's going to join a growing list of people for whom the Select Committee would like to charge with yeah. contempt of Congress. Criminal contempt of Congress. Jim and Erica. Uh, we'll be watching to see what comes out of that. Whitney, appreciate you getting that to us uh, right away as soon as you obtained that letter. Also with us now, CNN legal analyst Elliot Williams, who's back. So, Elliot, I know you're digesting that in real time as we are. <laughs> so let's let's make that our caveat here. But one of the things yeah. I think that was always interesting for folks is the fact that Mark Meadows, you know, had intimated he was, he was going to, you know, work with the committee at least uh, in, in some respect and in certain areas. The fact that we're now back to this question of executive privilege, right. just broadly based on what we know here. Is there anything that you could imagine that would involve communications with Mark Meadows that would not fall under executive privilege, that would be easier, perhaps, for the committee to talk to him about? Sure, if he had conversations with other people who were not White House personnel, and it seems inconceivable that he did not. Now, again, as we've talked about on this very program, um, the White House chief of staff is going to be in a different position than most of the other witnesses on account of the fact that he would have been face-to-face -face with the president for, for many conversations, and a lot of those are going to be protected, even ones butting up against the planning of January 6th. It's just going to depend on each individual conversation. Now, if uh, Mark Meadows were having outside conversations, and and this whole question of this other cell phone that may exist, what was he doing with it, and to whom was he texting, it's hard to come up with any basis for thinking that those conversations or communications would not, pardon me, would be uh, protected under executive privilege. So, so he writes a book about it. He's just described the president's health condition, right, which clearly the former president is not happy with. But he's not going to testify before the committee. Can, can you help our viewers understand, who are not lawyers like yourself, how that's possible? Uh, um, de delusion is one hell of a drug, uh, Jim. Look, number one, that book is itself going to be testimony. Number mm -hmm. two, um, while it is hard to harder to charge him with a crime than uh, other people, this b helps build a case for contempt. Again, I, I, again, mm -hmm. I want to caution everybody here that this is just a harder individual 
to challenge just based on the nature of his relationship. But again, as we've talked about before, the devil was always going to be in the details of someone's communications uh, uh, how someone would would yeah. ultimately come in to testify and they might say I'm going to I've seen it before a thousand times Jim Someone might say they're coming in to testify But the moment that first question mm -hmm. comes the moment a lawyer confronts them everything falls apart So I hesitate. Yeah. I am just not shocked at all by this development here. Well, it's interesting Zoe Lofgren said on our air last week. I believe to you Eric uh, Wait a second. Uh, I'm not so sure he's cooperating. So yeah. prescient words Elliot Williams. Yes. Thanks so yes, much. You're right. Jim. Thanks, Jim